All right. We are going to discuss about Apex SOAP call outs. So we've touched on doing SOAP integration, but on the previous trail, we've discussed about accessing Salesforce data or metadata from outside of Salesforce. So with SOAP, you actually request data from Salesforce. So now we are going to talk about call outs, meaning our Apex code will be doing the calling to the outside platform. So it's the other way around and get some data or post some data and update data and so on. So how can we do that? The same with the call in, you know, from the previous trail, we have to use WSDL um, from Salesforce. Remember, you go to setup and then you generate the enterprise WSDL to define all the available metadata to be accessed. And then from your PHP code or from your JavaScript code, you can access the Salesforce platform using the WSDL enterprise and then get data out of Salesforce. Now it's the other way around. We want to call to outside platform. So pretend that we have a platform which has a WSDL ready. So for this example, the trailhead have provided us this link. So for example, this is a WSDL file um, available from another platform, from an outside platform, right? For this particular example, we are accessing the calculator service from outside, which is from a Heroku instance, a Trailhead Heroku instance. So first things first, we want to save this file, all right? So what I do is I right click view page source, and then you have all this code. I'm just gonna copy it all and put it on my text code. Make a new one, boom, okay. So I'm gonna save this onto, and make sure you have no spaces. Make sure you don't have any extra blank line like that. And at the bottom, make sure you don't have any extra blank line as well, okay. So let's see what I should name this. So let's name it calculator.xml. Okay, I'm gonna copy that file name and then go back to my text edit here and just save this guy onto my documents folder. Boom, use XML. So it's on my documents folder, I saved that. So that's the WSDL file from the other platform outside of Salesforce, okay? So whatever platform you are accessing has to provide you with the WSDL. So now the cool thing from the WSDL, Salesforce have a function where it will generate Apex classes automatically, or should I say, automatically for you. And then you can access all the methods that's available by, by the WSDL uh, provided from the platform. So let's go ahead and do that. So from setup, we go Apex classes. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this guy, close this guy. And this is my trailhead playground. I'm gonna go to my setup here and go to my Apex classes. I should remind you that you cannot do this on a production environment. This is a playground, which is a developer org. So you can actually do what we are about to do, but you cannot do this on your real production environment. You have to go to your sandbox and do the whole thing and then deploy it to your production. Remember that, all right? So now, generate from WSDL. 
we are going to create a bunch of Apex classes from the WX, uh, SDL which we just downloaded. So it's going to be on my documents folder on the top here. So that's the calculator.xml file. We're going to parse WSDL. So parse successful, zero warnings, zero error. So what do you want to name the Apex class? Let's see if Trailhead provides us a specific name. Use the default class, class name. So I'm going to keep using that, all right? So I'm going to flip back to here and generate Apex code. The following generated classes compile successfully with no errors. Awesome. Calculator services and then we have async calculator services. Now we are done. So the first step is done. We have a bunch of Apex classes. Not a bunch, just two or uh, yeah, just two actually. And and now we can use them. So let's read this. The generated Apex classes include stub and type classes for calling the third-party web service represented by that file by the WSDL document. So these classes allow you to call the external web service from Apex. So you don't have to code it your own. It has generated the classes for you. For each generated class, a second class is created with the same name and the prefix async. So the calculator service class is for synchronous callouts. The async calculator services is for asynchronous callouts. Okay, remember that. Now, next step, execute the callout prerequisites. So we have to authorize the endpoint. So make sure we have to whitelist it. Okay, so let's authorize the endpoint and then add this url so if you forget you can click on here authorized endpoint section we've we've done that before so what you do is remote site settings and then new remote site okay so is this the same heroku endpoint apex soap surface let's see on here remote site settings have we added before no if we have animal 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 soap. Yeah, Apex Soap Surface dot Heroku app. So we've done that before from the previous trail, so we don't have to do it again, okay? Apex Soap Surface Heroku app. So I'm gonna skip that step because we've done that on the previous trail. And I'm gonna close this out. All right, now let's do some testing. I'm going to go to my developer console and open execute anonymous window. I'm gonna copy this guy to my developer console and command E or control E if you're on, on Windows and I'm going to maximize this so you can see change that so we have a calculator surface and then calculator implementation port new calculator surface and then we have defined a variable x is 1, double is y, y is a double and it's 2, and then we're just going to add them together. 1 plus 2 is 3, so we should see 3. Execute. And then we're going to see the debug log only. There, 3.0. So it's working as expected. Right? So now we have to test the web surface callouts. Okay, so I'm gonna separate this on a on a separate video because the test is a pretty thorough discussion as well. Let's separate that video onto the next one. Boom! Hit that subscribe button and explore new trailhead grounds and learn to implement the most useful and popular apps on the Salesforce App Exchange. And do yourself a favor, like this video, and you'll be surprised on how much more you understand 
when watching this same video after liking it. Don't take my word. Watch this one more time after you like the video and see it for yourself. Bada bing, bada boom. Thank <laughs> you.